Previously, Al Jazeera sent an undercover reporter to expose how the Israel lobby works in Britain. How the embassy is backing pro-Israel youth groups. The Israeli embassy in the UK gives money to the uh, union of Jewish students. At the center of events is the Israeli embassy's senior political officer. It's good to leave those organizations independent, but we help them to actually... To establish. Yeah. In part two of the lobby, our undercover reporter gains even greater access within Britain's pro-Israel community. And along the way, Robin is groomed for a most unexpected mission. <laughs> Following decades of violence, a new challenge has emerged to Israel's occupation of Palestinian lands, called BDS. BDS is here to stay. That's the global movement to boycott, divest, and impose sanctions on Israel and expose it as an apartheid state. The Israeli government has responded with a campaign to rebrand the country's image. The reason we should fight BDS is because it's wrong. It's a moral outrage. It's an operation run by the secretive Ministry of Strategic Affairs. They recruit mainly former intelligence officers. Its main task is to counter BDS worldwide. Using an undercover reporter, Al Jazeera's investigative unit exposes Israel's clandestine activities in London, a city that's become a major battleground. BDS campaign in many ways germinated in Britain. You'll meet the people working to challenge BDS at every level of British politics. Ah, OK, let's see what We work really closely together. We rely a lot of it behind the scenes. One of Israel's main targets is the Labour Party. For the first time, its leader is a champion of Palestinian civil rights. They'd be very happy to see Jeremy Corbyn no longer leader of the Labour Party, for sure. It's a covert action that penetrates the heart of Britain's democracy. Can I give you some evidence that we suggest you take down? It is outrageous interference in British politics. It shouldn't be permitted. It's a battle of ideas seeking to change not only how Israel's portrayed, but even how it is debated. It's anti-Semitic. No, it's not it anti-Semitic. It's anti Our undercover reporter has held meetings with the senior political officer of the Israeli embassy in London. Shai Masot wants Robin to help set up a new youth movement allied to Britain's Labour Party. It will soon be time for the party's annual conference, and he's keen that Robin attends. So we are going to be the huge group. Uh, from the embassy, we're going to be like about five people. Huh? And uh, they're going to be an MK from Israel and eight young labor from Israel. He suggests Robin liaise with the heads of other pro-Israel movements. So Luke Elkas is the director of We Believe in Israel. He's a great guy. So you know him? Of course. So Luke is a great guy. Of course, I know He's a great friend. We believe in Israel is uh, sitting together in the offices of like, But it's not the same organization. He's a great campaigner. He's one of the best in the inside. In all the parties, there is seriously there is not a lot of people like him. Uh, and Luke asked him if he is keen to. Can I mention your name towards Luke? Yeah. Shai also suggests that Robin contact Michael Rubin to take forward the idea of attracting pro-Israel young people to labor. Drop to Michael uh, an email. I'm mean, so keen to do that. To just need your umbrella. <laughs> Then you need a business card, that's it. Can I claim that I have your support? You can tell that I suggested to, uh, to contact you, but let me support because LFI is an independent organization. No one likes that someone is managing his organization. It's <laughs> <laughs> doing the press role in politics. Quite a lot, you know, when you know, 
bad news stories come out about Israel, he sends us information. for members of the Labour Party to travel to their annual conference in Liverpool. Robin sits with the Israeli delegation. Shai announces plans to establish another organization in Britain, this time with links to AIPAC, America's powerful pro-Israel lobby. I'm arranging a so here's an opportunity to all the, the city friends of Israel. And basically, we're doing a small lunch with a congressman from America. We're doing it, I'm doing it with APAC. Our investigation has already established this Israeli diplomat's links to numerous political groups in Britain, including the Parliamentary Lobby Group, the Labour Friends of Israel, or LFI. At the conference, Shai introduces our undercover reporter to LFI members at their stall. The Israeli diplomat advises the chair of the LFI about Robin's new role within her organization. So you just met. Yeah. He's yeah. uh, volunteering to LFI as well. Oh, yeah? And he's doing uh, the trying to get the young people. He's trying to arrange another investigation, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's a young activist yeah. of the yeah. 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 They discuss paying for influential MPs to take a government-run tour of Israel. What about the names that we put into the embassy? And just now got the money. It's, one, it's more than one million pounds. It's a lot of money. And then, uh, and now I got the money. So from Israel. So it's not physical. Yeah, it's improvement. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I and didn't now, think you had it in your bag. <laughs> <laughs> the government of Israel has already budget allocated to the various ministries, which can use it as they like, to bring foreign delegations to Israel. It's part of the information campaign. You may call it propaganda campaign. Uh, yeah, so. The deputy Israeli ambassador to the UK arrives at the stall and is introduced to our undercover reporter. Yes, this is Robin. He's uh, Lovely to meet you. now in the, in the LFI to bring young people to do young LFI. I a young baby as well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that doesn't indicate any divorce or not. Oh, no, no, it's not all over here. Would you like to? Oh, sorry, Shai networked with pro-Israel labor activists. He offered assistance to the Jewish Leadership Council, an influential umbrella group of Jewish organizations in Britain. And he told me that there is a couple of things that you asked, you gel, yeah, sure. uh, to arrange. So they wrote to, I mean, so I did to them a draft schedule. My understanding is it was more of a, it was just more of an offer from us to them to help facilitate anything they need with some suggestions of what to do. Uh, but I don't know anything more than that at this point. They were better, they were amazing. They, they used to basically say, shy, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> That's good. And, uh, I love when people <laughs> While in Liverpool, Shai's confidence in Robin grows. The Israeli diplomat even goes so far as to introduce him as the chairman of the Young Labour Friends of Israel. Young Labour Friends of Israel. 
Robin learns that pro-Israel activists are planning to attend a meeting organized by the Labor Friends of Palestine and the Middle East, the LFPME. On the way, he spots Luke Akehurst, the prominent pro-Israel operative within Labor, who Shai had told Robin to contact. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Akehurst. Hi. Hi, I'm Robin, the guy setting up the young LFI. Problem? I want to. Yeah, he was going for super. We have a like, little progress now. We have the first signing up for uh, 22 people on the mailing list. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Are you going to any events? To the, the LFPME thing? Yes. Yes, I am, yes, because yes. I need to take notes on that. Oh, are you going to write something? No, no, no just the internal for my point. Yep. It becomes clear that as well as Akehurst, other pro-Israel activists will be discreetly recording the event. Uh, oh, there's the Labour Friends of Palestine and the Greece 1 and 2.30, I'll be going to, so I need to charge my phone up so I can get some more recordings. Ahead of the Palestine event, one member of the Israeli delegation contemplates wearing a T-shirt promoting Israel. She's dying for some action. Yes, yes, it's good. I, I wouldn't if I were you. You wouldn't if you were me. Well, I mean, uh, Akos is going to write a report. These anyway. are our, these are our spies. Which is why you can't wear that T-shirt because then they will. Everyone, yeah, 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 the chairman of the Jewish labor movement. Newmark recently appointed Ella Rose as the JLM's new director. The training session was arranged following allegations of anti-Semitism within the Labour Party. It became a highly publicized matter for Jeremy Corbyn after an incident involving the former mayor of London. A Nazi apologist, a Nazi apologist. You're a disgusting Nazi apologist, Livingstone. A barrister, Shami Shakrabati, launched an inquiry and concluded that despite an occasionally toxic atmosphere, anti-Semitism was not endemic within the party. Anti-Semitism as a phenomenon across the world. Um, this is an example of the case. In 1992, Buenos Aires, Israeli embassy, pressure line killed 242 injured. In 2012, a student school attacked injured. Four killed. Obviously, in 2014, shortly after the awful attack in the country uh, uh, supermarket in Paris. The private JLM training session was about to have very public consequences for one attendee. At the start, it seemed relatively relaxed. Um, it was simply a training session. Um, and I think some of us had gone along there uh, with the idea that um, it was kind of strange, because in some ways this was going against what uh, Shamish Chakrabarti had actually advised. So we wanted to see what was going on. The CSC, the uh, community school, they recorded 557 ISIS against the across the UK in the first six months of 2016. And that is an 11% increase in the period of 2014 was the most anti-Semitic year on record. One member of the audience challenges how the list was drawn up. And I'm wondering if I'm now going on that list. My MP actually sent a letter to Jeremy Corbyn asking him to bar me from the man in the landscape because I was an example of anti-Semitism because his office and draw through my Facebook page and find an article that I'd shared by Norman Finkelstein. Finkelstein wrote, in what many considered a humorous post, that one way to deal with the occupation of Palestinian land was to move Israel to the United States. In the past, anti-Semitism was hating Jews for being Jews. Uh, now Israel tries to extend it to say, that this is any criticism about what Jews are doing 
uh, is also anti-Semitism. If you question the right of Israel to be a Jewish state, uh, then you are uh, not different from these classical anti Semites. This goes back to the training session. They do this by saying most Jews relate to Israel as being an important part of their identity. What you need to do is recognize that Israel is an integral part of the vast majority of Jewish community. Therefore, if you attack Israel, you are attacking their identity. You've got to create a welcome, welcome to make this fair. I think you need to be careful with your language and about your references to the Holocaust. And what you might say to actually de de delegitimize that right of Israel, that basic right of Israel, I think, comes from to exist. That is not appropriate. Zionism, Zion, not a term of use. And it's in any labor party not appropriate. Zionism is the political ideology that Israel has the right to exist as an exclusively Jewish homeland in historic Palestine. I'm Jewish, and I don't agree with the concept of the Jewish state because it gives me the right to live in Israel, whereas a Palestinian who's been displaced has a lot of right than me. So we just think that's not appropriate. Are you really saying it's not appropriate for us to have a political discussion? The Jews of Europe had the right to look for a safe haven. There's no doubt about it. When they were persecuted by anti-Semitic governments and movements, and definitely the Jews had to save themselves when this anti-Semitism has turned into the Nazi uh, uh, machine of destruction and genocide. The question is, do people who were persecuted in Europe have the right to displace people of another place? Can the abused become an abuser? You are so effectively that Zionism, you know, is not open to debate as a concept, then that is really worrying. Anti-Semitism, like any form of racism, is deplorable. And my feeling about how to tackle this is for Jews to be standing all against squarely alongside black, our black comrades, our Muslim comrades, who are much more at the moment the target of racism than the of the moment we are. As well as our undercover reporter, someone else was secretly recording the debate. <laughs> I'm laughing because um, by the time the row actually broke out, I was on my way home. I mean, none of us thought anything about this training session. I was in the car and suddenly I started to get these tweets coming through to me and these phone calls from the BBC. A secretly recorded clip was leaked to a news outlet. What was actually leaked were certain little segments that would be as controversial as possible. On the Holocaust Day, I would also like to say, wouldn't it be wonderful if Holocaust Day was open to all people who experienced Holocaust. And if the Jews experienced Holocaust, yes. yes. as soon as I spoke, if you like, there was a ripple in the room. And I was just constantly interrupted. What about the Holocaust subsequent genocide? Well, actually, it impacted Jewish communities in Europe. It I'm not just Jewish, I am black, and my ancestry is of African enslavement. Only this year I spoke at Slavery Remembrance Day and I spoke to a crowd in Trafalgar Square about the African Holocaust, and that is what we call it. You can disagree with me as to whether I should call that a Holocaust, but it's not anti-Semitic for me to call what happened to African people in the diaspora a Holocaust. How it was reported and how it was tweeted was I was basically saying, I can't find anywhere a definition of anti-Semitism to work with. That's total nonsense. 
I'm an anti-racist trainer. I've been an anti-racist trainer for 40 years. I've been fighting fascists and anti-Semites on the streets for decades. The incident caused uproar in the British media. The board of deputies of British Jews called Walker an unapologetic Jew baiter. Walker was suspended from the Labour Party pending an investigation. Shortly afterwards, Robin meets the embassy's senior political officer. What do you think of that woman? Well, check the wall for her. Yeah, yeah she is problematic. <laughs> what can I do? I report every time she needs to. Yeah. In recent years, there is a growing tendency within the government to, to smear people who are anti-Israeli or anti-Zionist also to be anti-Semite. But not all anti-Israelis and, and anti-Zionists are anti-Semite. On the contrary. If they accuse anybody of anti-Semitism, it's basically as bad as kind of accusing somebody of being a paedophile or a murderer, you know? And it's really hard to come back from that. All right, have a good day. Meanwhile, our undercover reporter spots Ella Rose across the road. News had broken of Ella's former job at the Israeli embassy, which had not been widely known. She's in tears because of what she considers anti-Semitic harassment. You're right. It's been a tough week. Tough week. Sweaty than that. You're right. Essentially, Electronic Intifada released that I worked at the embassy before JLM. And Jackie Wolf has been slamming me online all week. And I just stand in front of her. It was really hard. It was really hard. It's over. Gonna go run a rally. So f you. F you. Yeah, I do see what a lot of them. Oh, my God. When our undercover reporter next met Ella, she had regained her composure. I saw Jackie Wolfer on Saturday and thought, you know what, I can take her. She's like 5'2 and tiny. That's why I can take Jackie Wolfer. <laughs> Trump training. Yeah, I'm not bad. <laughs> if it came to it, I would win. That's all I really care about. Oh my gosh. Well, I kind of, that says it all. I mean, you know, I don't even speak about people like that in that way that you would take somebody, you would take somebody out. And she's speaking about another Jewish Labour member in this way. I think that's breathtaking. It's absolutely breathtaking. I'm, I'm just stunned. The report that Ella worked at the Israeli embassy had appeared in the Electronic Intifada, a pro-Palestinian news website. Ella Rose had been working for a year at the Israeli embassy in London, something that wasn't widely known at all, that had been, as far as I could ascertain, had been essentially covered up. Oh, Atta Winstanley! He was the one that wrote the douchey things about me. He's in shit. They know they can't win when the debates are open, so they have to do these things behind closed doors. So when I'm outing her as um, an officer at the Israeli embassy and she didn't want that to be publicly known, yeah, she's not gonna like that. She's, she's gonna lash out. Look, at the end of the day, these people are sad, sad crosses. Completely pathetic. You leave them in their corner where they belong and bury over them and their existence. As far as I'm concerned, they can go die a She's worked for the Israeli state. The Israeli state talks about a war against organizations like us. It's, it is a threatening thing to hear about, absolutely. What we need to have is some investigation of this from the Labour Party, and I will be making a formal complaint against both Ella Rose and the Jewish Labour movement. <laughs>
In part three, controversy over anti-Semitism continues at the labor conference. You know, classic anti-Semitic. Yeah, yeah, and a warning from the Israeli ambassador to pro-Israel supporters in Britain. The fashion is, if you are on the left today, you are probably <laughs> <laughs> a very hostile to Israel. If not, you are not participating.